Yo, what is up guys? Issa here bringing you guys another Genshin Impact video and now today I'm going to be talking about a full-on Genshin Impact beginner's guide. This is going to be for every player. So if you're new, this will be for you. But even if you're not and you want to take away a couple tips from this video, make sure to watch the whole video and maybe one of these tips will really help you out. But anyways, let's get started. So guys, right now I am on my main account, but I will be going to my free-to-play account right now to show you guys what you need to do when you start off the game. So the first thing you guys need to be focusing on is doing your main story. Your main quest is where you're going to get a lot of your experience. You're going to be getting a lot of experience books to level up your characters, as well as a lot of Mora, a lot of enhancement stones to level up your weapons. There's a lot of different things that you'll need, and I'm going to go through each one of those things as well. So you have your story quest here. I've, obviously, you guys can see that I'm not a high enough adventure rank to do this yet. But you see I need to become Adventure Rank 26. Now, what's a good way to level up? Maybe you are struggling to get to a certain level. You don't really know what to do. Now, the first thing I do, right now I'm Adventure Rank 24 on my free-to-play account. I'm going to be doing my commission quest. And as you can see, I'm getting 200 Adventurers experience, which is really, really nice, as well as Primo Gems. And so once I finish up these four daily commission quests, I'm going to go to Mondstadt. And once I finish up all my daily commission quests, which you get four a day, which gives you 10 Primo Gems per quest, so that's 40 Primo Gems, you claim your daily commission reward, which will give you an additional 20 Primo Gems and more adventure experience to hopefully level your adventure rank up. Now, while you're also doing story quests, you're also going to be getting these Archon quests. These Archon quests are also some special quests where you can also get 60 Primo Gems, which is really, really nice. And as you can see, I'm getting Adventures experience from this mission. I'm getting Enhancement Stones, which is, once again, as I said before, this is for leveling up your weapons. And Mora, which is the currency that you need to do literally anything in this game. Whether it is getting your character's ascension higher so you can increase their level cap. Or even upgrading their artifacts or their weapons. You really need Mora. Mora is an extremely important resource in this game. I uh, will be telling you guys how you can get it. But mainly by doing story quests, doing side quests that you're going to see throughout the story. Make sure you are talking to everyone you can. Whenever you see a side quest icon pop up, grab that side quest. Because you may be missing out on Mora, experience, and even some hero books. Now if you're like me right now and you're stuck on a story quest because your, your adventure rank is not high enough. All you need to do, make sure you're doing your commission quest. This is really important, as I said before. This gives a lot of experience. Do the quest that you currently can do. So make sure you're doing your Archon quests. These world quests as well, as you can see, they give adventure experience. Look at how much adventure experience I get from this. I get 500 adventure experience as well as 60 Primo Gems. So try to get these done as soon as you can. And now let's go to the map. As you can see, the map is fairly large in this game. There's a lot of areas to discover. Now, an easy way to get Primo Gems is, as soon as you can, try to unlock all of these different waypoints. These different waypoints will give you five Primo Gems per unlocking each one. And so, if I unlock my Statue of Seven here, I get five Primo Gems, five from these Teleport Waypoints. As well as unlocking these Domains, you also get Primo Gems. So, make sure you're doing that, because you're going to be missing out on Primo Gems. And this is really important for you guys to do and as soon as you can unlock one of these statue of sevens in, in each of these areas you're going to open up a lot of the map and you're going to be able to see what there is on the map and so that's going to help you out with exploration with seeing if there's a new boss that you can fight such as a boss like here for, for oceanid and and all these other different bosses which i will discuss as well but that's just the simple breakdown. There's a lot of different domains where you can get a lot of different materials, and I will be talking about that shortly. Now, what is resin? Now, for all my new players out there, you may be wondering, what is this resin? What do I do with it? How does this work? Now, your resin, let's, let me click F1 right now, go into my journal. Now, this is the journal that you're going to be using a lot. Now, go into commissions. You can see everything that's here, and domains and enemies so every day you get your daily resin now this daily resin 
which you see right here. I have 160 right now. Um, you can use this resin to get artifacts. You can use it to get weapon ascension material, which means that we can increase the level cap on our current weapon that we have so we can deal the most amount of damage and also upgrade its ability as well. And now in this domain section, it shows what domains I have unlocked and what I can currently do. And now you guys can see there's a lot of different domains here that I don't have unlocked. That's because my adventure rank right now is not high enough to unlock these domains so i have to increase my adventure rank before i can go to this area and unlock this domain and actually be able to get those different artifacts or ascension materials that i may need and also right here i have a weekly boss now now the trounce domain it shows what i can do right now for a weekly boss and now storm terror is one of the weekly bosses that we can do i'm not going to go too much in depth on there but you get really really amazing materials every week so you can only do it once per week and you can get these awesome artifacts and amazing blueprints that you're going to need to craft later on, which I will go over as well. And I'm not going to really break down Spiral too much because as a beginner player, you're really trying to focus on trying to build your units up right now. But try to progress through Spiral Abyss as much as you can. And at a certain point, you are going to get stuck because one, your artifacts are not going to be good enough and you just need to start leveling up your characters as well as ascending your weapon materials. So those are things you just need to do. And it's going to take you a lot of time to progress through Spiral Abyss. So just don't really worry too much about this right now from the beginning. Really focus on building up your main team and leveling up your characters. That's what really matters. And now if we go to enemies here, there's a lot of different enemies we can do to get these crystals. Now these crystals from each one of these enemies can be used to ascend each one of your characters. Now obviously every character has a different type. One type may be electric type, one type may be animo, one may be pyro. And we can see here what type of crystals we get. So if I go to like the pyro regis vine, I can actually see that I can get red crystals to use for my ascension. And I can easily just navigate it right here. And since I haven't unlocked it, I can't actually go to the boss, but you guys kind of get the idea of why this is all here. This really helps you with getting a lot of different materials. So let's say if I need something like this right here, right? Black crystal horns or, or black bronze horns, I can look at every single one of these enemies and see what they drop that I may need for ascension or even ascending my weapons. Okay, now let's go into the character. Each character is very different. Someone like Diluc is also known as a main damage dealer. He primarily is going to be the main character that you want to run around and deal, dealing a lot of damage, but not everyone is going to have someone like Diluc. But you may have someone like Kaya, who's also a really good damage dealer option. You have someone like Traveler. And let's go into the weapons. Now, when it comes to weapons, all you need to do is hit Enhance right here. And you can actually ascend your weapon to increase the level cap. And as you can see, I can read into the weapon's abilities and see what it does. But the main thing is ascending it to get to a higher level. And once I ascend it, I can actually enhance this weapon. And if I have a lot of copies or let's say duplicates of this weapon from summoning from wishes, I can simply refine it like this. And there you go. And as you can see... The special ability on my weapon, the percentage has increased, which may help me out in the future. And also, when you're enhancing in the beginning, try to use these green ones to enhance. And try to save as much of these blue crystals as you can, because these are very valuable resources. And so, what you want to do is you want to use the green ones for, let's say, your first plus 20. Just like that. And as you can see, I can actually ascend this weapon as well. So let's ascend it. And now I can actually get my weapon to level 40. Which, as you can see, the attack went up and the ability percentage that I have also went up, which is really, really nice. Now, there's a lot of artifacts in this game, guys. And there's a lot of different sets that you can get and it can be very overwhelming. But simply, I'm going to break it down to you really, really easily. Now, if you have a damage dealer, like one of your main damage dealers, you want to focus on getting him with a lot of attack gear like attack a main stat now when it comes to your flower the flower will always be a hp main stat so this is something you don't really need to worry about too much and the plume will also always be attack so this one will always be attack and this one will always be hp main stat now when it comes to the sands there's a lot of different roles that you may get so when you're playing the game you may get different main stat drops just because it is based off of rng which is just randomized luck so you may get something that's really good like a really good attack gear or you may get something like defense 
and that's okay. Use whatever you can use, but you want to try to get as much attack as you can. Now for the goblet, you have a chance to get an elemental damage bonus. So for someone like Diluc, who is a pyro damage dealer, a fire damage dealer, I put a pyro damage bonus goblet on him to increase the pyro damage that he's doing, which is really, really nice. And so in the beginning, throw an attack goblet on your damage dealer and you should be totally fine. And same thing here. When it comes to your circlet, you can throw attack, but you can also get the opportunity to get something like this, like a crit damage main stat or a crit rate or crit rate circle it as well but don't worry too much about that right away just focus on trying to get a lot of attack on your units and then later on focus on that crit now when it comes to constellations don't worry too much about this constellation you do get some really nice abilities but realistically if you are someone who is a free-to-play player you're playing low budget don't worry too much about this but later on you will need to start focusing on certain characters getting a constellation and so as you can see someone like kaya i have a one constellation on him he gets the crit rate of his normal and charge attacks against opponents affected by cryo so his ice ability that increases by 15 percent so that's this is really nice because i get 15 percent more damage increased with my normal and charge attacks with kaya but you guys kind of get the drift more the more duplicate characters that you get the better abilities that they can get it's it's pretty self-explanatory but that's what a constellation really means now talents this is something that you're going to be doing kind of later on in the game but uh, i'm not going to really break this down too much but pretty much you upgrade your character's main abilities so something like his normal attack that you're doing you can upgrade the percentage of damage that you're dealing by upgrading my character's talents as well as their elemental skill and their ultimate ability so these percentages will go up if you upgrade these talents and this is definitely something you need to really focus on later down the line so don't worry too much about it but i'm just giving you guys an overview on the whole character system now let's talk about bosses guys now we have a lot of different bosses that you see all around here and you may be wondering okay what do i do now let's say for someone like d luke or maybe even someone like kaya someone who's an ice character i need to do the pyro regis vine and if i click on this i can get these blue crystals to ascend my character that i need and and obviously i showed you guys how to do the ascension so that should help you out a lot but as you can see we get these as well this is a character level up material that you need to ascend a specific character so someone like kaya needs something like this so i can do the pyro regis vine and as you can see it costs 40 daily resin and so i'm going to use this resin to get these crystals and potentially get a really good artifact now there's also something known as weekly bosses now what i was discussing before these guys right here the regis vines even these guys the oceanid the hypostasis these are all daily bosses you can do these bosses whenever you want as long as you have resin here you can do these bosses as much as you want but when it comes down to these bosses right here, there's there's the wolf boss, which as you can see is only takes one attempt that I can do per week. Same thing with Storm Terror right here. Storm Terror, you can only do it once per week, but the rewards that you get is much greater. So make sure you are doing these because you may be missing out on something like these blueprints that you may need for a weapon for crafting, um, these awesome artifacts, as well as additional like stones and materials that you're going to need later down the line. So this is really, really important, and you get a good amount of adventurer's XP as well. Now, let's go into the blacksmith. So this is the entrance of Mondstadt, which is going to be your best friend for a while. You're going to be around here all the time, and we're going to go to Wagner right here. He's going to talk to us about ores and all that good jazz, but let's go into I Like Something Made. And you can see right now, there's all of these different weapons that we can make. And so this is a really good area. So once you start getting these blueprints, you see I have one blueprint here. I can make a weapon that I really want. Or let's say if I want to get an additional copy of this weapon because I want to refine this since I already have it, I can do that. And so I can do this right here. I can maybe if I want to make another one of these swords right here, I can do that. And there you go. The weapon should be done in a second. There you go. That's it. I highly suggest you make the prototype archaic as well. It's one of the best free-to-play claymores in the game. It's actually one of the best free-to-play weapons in general. But this is such a good weapon. And I, I use this even on my main account. It's a really good weapon. So definitely craft it if you have a claymore user. 
Now, I almost forgot to mention, make sure when you are in this journal that you have, if you press F1 on PC, this is how you get to this page, but make sure you're getting this investigations done. These are the different chapters. And as you can see, if you complete all these different things that you need to do, you can claim and you get a, re a reward right here. See, I got 50 primos. I got three hero wits, which is really, really nice. Mora, as well as an artifact. So you get really good rewards out of this. So don't skip out on it. Also, quick tip, don't use these hero wits right away. Make sure you're not using it on your characters right away. Save these hero wits up because you're going to need them. I guarantee you're going to need them later down the line. So save these guys up. Use your adventurer's experience, the blue ones, and use the green ones. Don't use the purple ones right away until your characters are around like level around like rank 50-ish. You can start using them, but just don't use it right away. Save these guys up for when you really want to level up your main team. Now, I almost forgot to mention, so I already talked about the daily bosses that you can do, which cost resin, as well as the weekly bosses, which also cost resin. But now you have these things right here called ley line outcrops. These ley lines are really, really nice because you can get things like adventure experience and even gold which the gold one is right here. So in the beginning, the rewards that you get aren't really as great. I really don't suggest doing your ley lines right away. This is something you're gonna do later down the line because you're gonna be actually getting purple books from this when you are around AR40 and up. So make sure you are not doing this right away. You, you don't have to focus on ley lines because the story is going to give you so much adventure experience as well as a lot of more so don't even worry about this right away just focus on your story focus on your side quests and focus on leveling up your characters and getting those ascension materials that you need to get them leveled up so once you level your adventure rank up as you can see i'm about to level up right now i go directly to catherine from the adventurers guild and i go to claim adventure rank rewards now from her i can get all these different adventure rank rewards that are given so you can get a lot of different amazing rewards such as primo gems you get hero wits you get mora from here you also get summons from here as well as you can see i i, I get something like a four star weapon and as you can see you also get fragile resin something known as fragile resin now this is one of the most important resources in the game and i'm telling you later down the line when you are a higher adventure rank you are going to need these so badly to get really good artifacts because artifacts is what really matters late game now i highly suggest actually i don't even just highly suggest you but do not i repeat do not use your fragile resin until you are adventure rank 45 why adventure rank 45 it's because when you're adventure rank 45 you can get the best of the best artifacts you can start doing level 90 domains and start getting consistent five star artifact drops and so you're not wasting your resin trying to get consistent four stars you can actually start getting five stars and some really really good gear to start building those incredible artifact sets that you're going to need to do for spiral abyss now let's talk about one of the most important resources that you're going to need in this game and that is the genshin interactive map now, there's going to be a bunch of different Genshin interactive maps you can use. I'll link this one. There's a bunch that you can use. Now, why is this so incredibly important? It's because if, let's say if I need to find a shrine and I can't find it because I have a Mondstadt key that I got, I can just click on Mondstadt right here and I can see where the shrine location is and I can go to this exact location on my Genshin map and there you go. I know where the shrine is. So this is really, really important. I, I think it really helps out a lot. It helped me out a lot. And let's say if I want to even do something like silk flowers, I don't know where silk flowers are. I can see where I can get silk flowers on the map right here. It shows me all the locations or primarily the main locations I can get silk flowers. Let's say even violet grass. Look at all these different locations that it shows me. And I can even go on my Genshin game if I really want to mark down those locations and I can pin it on my map. I can do this, pin it and there you go that's a flower location or, or i can do this and that's a location that i will have permanently saved on my map and if i want to get rid of it i can just delete it and mark down a different location so this is really important and it's also really good for mining as well so if you need those mining resources to make your weapons you can come on here and go to something like magic crystal chunks let me uncheck the violet grass 
But let's say if you need something like crystal chunks, which you really need for making enhancement ores, as well as for making weapons. So you cannot make weapons if you don't have crystals. So I can hit crystals right here, or even these blue crystal chunks. But the main thing is these, these, these crystal chunks right here are really important. But as you can see, there's so many different locations I can go, and I can just farm these. I can just go on the map, and I can break these, and I can farm them out, and then make my weapons and make my also my enhancement stones so this is really one of my favorite resources is this genshin interactive map you also get to learn the map a little more as well you get to explore around and yeah that it, it's really an amazing resource and i will link this specific map in my description below but definitely check this out it's going to really help you guys out in your genshin journey now the last thing i want to talk to you guys about is primo gems as well as wishes i'm not going to really break down primo gems too much but this is pretty much a resource that you need to do these wishes to get a powerful character someone like diona is an amazing option um yanfei is a new character who i think is one of the best four stars right now in the game and then we also have zhongli also one of the best five stars in the game now five stars are extremely powerful characters really high stats and they are extremely good so standard wishes don't use your primo gems on this you will be getting free acquaint fates just by playing through the game and doing everything that i've been telling you guys to do you will be getting these acquaint fates as well so keep on doing that and weapon banners i would honestly stay away from the weapon banner um personally um I, I don't wish on the weapon banner and if i was a new player i would just focus on the main banner so you guys also have this beginner wish banner which you get a guaranteed noel from now that you can do twice so you can do two multiple summons which will be worth only eight acquaint fates instead of 10 which is the usual requ requirement so that's really good so you can potentially get a five star character or a really powerful four star so yeah just stay away from the standard wish banner unless you have free summons or like these acquaint fates already and stay away from the weapon banner really focus on the character event banner and try to get maybe a uh, featured five star unit or even one of these powerful uh four star units specifically diona and yanfei are very good but uh yeah this is an amazing banner that i think you guys can do and yeah now that is it guys, make sure you enjoy the game. This game is a gotcha game, but it's also a phenomenal open world game. So enjoy the story, enjoy the game itself. There's a lot for you guys to do and to discover. And this game is really, really fun. It's a game that I'm really passionate about. And so I, I explained to you guys on how domains work, different weapon ascension materials, how to do a lot of different things in the game. Mainly focus on story and side quests and trying to get your characters leveled up and start working on their weapons. That's one thing I really suggest you guys to work on from the beginning of the game. And make sure, don't use that fragile resin. Don't use that resin. Uh, save that resin up until you are adventure rank 45 so you can get the best artifacts at that point in the game unlocked. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like the video if it really helped you guys out and subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Twitch because I stream all the time and I would love to see you guys on there as well and join my Discord and you can ask me any questions, interact with me, do whatever you want. I also do giveaways on occasion as well so you can join and stay up to date with me. But other than that guys, it's your boy Isa Usa and I will see you next time in the next video. Peace out.